spoke too soon look at this all right what's up everyone we're back out on the hunt again the twilight princess quest has finally been completed so today i think we're just going to hit some of the local charity shops with a bit of freedom we're not going to have any goals about trying to build up trade credit for any particular pickups or anything like that i think we'll just do a bit more of a casual go for a spin around hit the local charity shop see if we can find that and have a little chat in between and see how the day goes so yeah no rules around the game hunt today we're nearly at the first one now so we'll see who's in there here we go stop number one let's jump in and see if there's any games No, it's not the best there. Nothing in there for today. I did ask the chap working in there. He said there hasn't been any games for weeks. So at least now it's not just me. There's not someone hot my heels lapping up all the games locally. So we just keep moving on. It's the usual stuff today. You know where we're going next. The two where we never find anything. Let's see what happens. One of these days, I'm telling you, one of these days we're going to walk in there right after someone just donated their entire GameCube collection. I'm going to keep this channel going for the next 10 years until that happens, so you better get used to it. On to the next. Do you know what? F*** it. Because there's no reels today, we're going to go up to the one in Colester. Used to go to this one the odd time. I think I visited it maybe two videos ago. Didn't see any games at all. But we're going to swing back up there because I think the last time we were there, we kind of found a handy little shortcut to the Jack and Jill. So even though we're going a little bit out of our way now, we kind of don't lose too much on the way back. So why not? Let's just stop in and see what they have. Oh, need for speed. Well, I think I remember why we don't go there anymore. They did have some PS3 games there, pretty much all need for speeds, and they were all priced at five euro each. A couple of them sell for five euro. Don't think we needed any of them for the collection. Like, if there was one there that sells for five and CEX, and was in absolutely immaculate condition and we didn't have it, we might have just picked it up for the crack. But nothing there for some of the games today. Did actually manage to grab one book, though. I've seen this Pokemon Super Extra Deluxe Essential Handbook. I do have some sort of Pokemon Essential Handbook at home, so I'm guessing this is the super extra deluxe version of it but books were 150 each not in absolutely amazing condition it's obviously been pre-read and pre-loved but just thought i'd pick it up maybe it's something to flip at some stage nice big book here you'd maybe get a five or something for it but i think it'll just sit nice in the shelf with the other book and like i said before we're not big pokemon fans but trying to do my due diligence and kind of get up to speed on pokemon in case we come across any like cards or any other rare bits just so as we know what we're looking at so yeah for 150 i thought it was worth picking up and a stark reminder in there that cash is king lads i always bring a few quid cash with me i've been to two of those vince shops so far and um, both of the card machines are down so it's obviously like a server thing within those actual shops so you're not going to get any cards working at any of the shops like maybe that'll work in our favor maybe we need to figure out where more vincents are and go in there because people might be in there trying to buy piles of games but they can't actually use their credit card to buy it so but yeah point in hand always keep a few quid cash on you but we're going to head on now to jack and jill see if there's anything in there I mean to take a chance on some Lego, but any minifigs? No, not really. Yeah, yeah. Mm. 
This connect set looks old. It's got the book and all. 1995. 95? Yeah. Maybe it'll take a pump for referee. The case itself is pretty cool. I have absolutely no idea if I just robbed myself paying 8 euro for that or not, but I just thought it was pretty cool. Anyway, something to look up when we get home. Let's keep moving. So we've just been since down in Kulak to go to now, and we might as well bop out the swords while we're out and about in the car, because we haven't seen, well, we've seen games, but we haven't seen anything to pick up yet, so might as well go all the way out there, have a look in the charity shops. And I think worst case scenario, I'm in the mood for grabbing a few games today, so we'll go into the CEX out there, and we'll, I don't know, we'll set a little budget when we get there, maybe we'll try and spend like 25 quid, and we'll just get a few random games. As I said, no vouchers to be used up, nothing like that. Let's just go in there, pick out a few random games that we've never heard of and spend a bit of cash kind of like what we did at the end of the last episode where we grabbed the two random Wii games while we were waiting for our trade-in to come true. At least that way we won't end up empty-handed and we have a lot of stuff to talk about back in the house. A few bits and pieces have come in, a few competition wins, a few odds and ends that I've just randomly picked up so we'll have a look at them when we get back. But we'll keep moving now so we go down to Vincent's Kulak like I said maybe we'll get the jackpot because their credit card machine isn't working and someone left a pile of games for us who knows but yeah let's keep moving and we'll jump in there and see what happens. So our next stop is just behind us we're well overdue a few games from this one hopefully today is the day Mario Kart 8 sealed on the switch we can get 32 for NCX or we can keep it I think I downloaded mine but I don't think I actually have a physical copy so Games otherwise, so I think we'll grab that. So that's the first on this channel we picked up a Switch game in a charity shop. Now we paid 25 quid for it, but that's still a good price. It's going for 32 quid in CX. I think they're still going brand new for well over 40 in the likes of Smiths and stuff like that. So as I've mentioned, I do have this game. I've got it downloaded at home, but I don't have a physical copy of it. So one for the collection. It's the original seal on it. As you can see, it's got Nintendo things, but we're going to shock the world up. We're just going to tear it open because well, it wasn't actually sealed. It was kind of... The original one stuck back on. Let's double check and make sure it's in there. And it is. So that is a pretty cool little pickup, as I said, for 25 euro. More than likely going to keep it to have a physical copy in the collection. But if we really wanted it, we could bring this up to CX now and get 32 quid and maybe make 7 euro on it. But I don't know. I think that's a nice little find. I think that's one that we're definitely going to have to keep. But anyway, we're off the market games. Let's shoot down the swords. The juices are flowing now. So let's hit the last two charity shops there and hopefully pick up a few more to round out the day with. See, so yeah, we're just on our way down to swords now. Had to do a quick pit stop in Woody's there just to get a few bits. But yeah, as I've mentioned a couple of times, just a kind of a casual sort of game hunting on this one we're actually up to if my count is correct i think this is going to be game hunting episode 59 which is it's absolutely crazy like looking back on some of the older footage now i know even nowadays it's <laughs> A little bit of work can be done with editing and stuff like that, but yeah, we're getting there slowly but surely. But yeah, looking back on some of the older footage, I, when I got monetized there a few weeks ago, I was kind of going back on the older videos, just taking out ads because YouTube absolutely plow the ads into the videos. So just for anyone that came across the old ones, in case they're like getting ads every two minutes. But yeah, looking at some of the footage, just some of the shakiness with the phone and the talking, oh, it's just cringe worthy. But to think we're on episode 59 now is just absolutely nuts. I mean, technically, we probably are nearly on episode 60 because the Dublin City one, well, I didn't really put it down as a game hunting episode as such because we weren't really out on the hunt but yeah it was its own thing for what it was so we're going to call this one 59 i think we'll do one more kind of i don't know i don't know what we'll do for the next one the next one's going to be episode 60 so maybe we'll try and do something a bit different or something a bit special for that one we'll have a little think about it over the next week or two we have a lot coming up i still have to edit you'll be watching this video and i still have to edit the video that would have come out before this if that makes sense i said i'm trying to kind of record a little bit in advance so that i constantly have stuff to put out rather than leaving gaps of like three weeks with no videos but i just get so lost in the matrix i never know where i am so if i say something that doesn't make any sense just don't mind me i'm all over the shop but yeah i think we'll try and come up with something a little bit special for episode 60 try and have a bit of fun with it try and pick up a few games maybe do some sort of a giveaway or something like that so and then that's the perfect transition to beg for some subscriptions so if you're watching the video you've stuck it out this long you're not subscribed to the channel 
please take a moment to hit the subscribe button down there. It costs absolutely nothing. As I always say, we only put a video every week or two, so we're not spamming any feeds or anything like that. And all it does is, when you go onto the YouTube homepage, it might suggest some of our videos a little bit more. So if you are enjoying them, it's no harm. It's only going to increase your YouTube viewing experience. And subscribe to the channel and like and comment and all that good stuff really helps the channel get pushed out there for other people to see it. So if you do take the time to subscribe or hit a like or drop a comment, it's so much appreciated. And then where do we go from there? I think we need to do some soul searching over the next few weeks. Uh, don't worry, we're going to be doing videos all the time. The channel's going to keep going, but it is getting a little bit stale hitting the same kind of charity shops all the time. It's kind of all I have on my doorstep. I do a lot of shift work as well, so I just get random days off during the week where I get an opportunity to go hunt. I simply mentioned going to like car boot sales and stuff like that. There are a few local ones coming up over the next sort of month or two that I am going to try my best to get out to. But some of the bigger ones that are on every week, I've, I've been to them the odd time. I've never really gone with the camera, but a lot of what's there is just people wholesale and stuff out. I'm sure there's some great bargains to be had. I'm sure people go and pick up games all the time. But I mean, there's even one big one that from what I hear, there is someone there that sells games. It opens at like six in the morning and before it even opens they have like they pay people to go around and basically grab all the games that they can see that are selling for cheap people that are doing like house clear outs and stuff like that and bringing them over to that booth to sell so it's going to be fairly difficult to pick games up but I don't know maybe it's something I need to be going to every week to give it a good fair whack and see if anything shows up but the problem with that is I work pretty much every weekend and I do a lot of early shifts as well so even though these car boot sales can start at like 6 in the morning a lot of the time I'm starting work at like 5 in the morning so by the time I'm finished the car boot sales are finished as well so it is hard for me to get that sort of content done for the channel I also seen a mention of garage sales I wish garage sales were a thing over here I, like, it's where you see all the lads in America picking up all the absolutely crazy stuff if there was garage sales here I don't even care about work I'd be calling in sick or swapping shifts or doing something I'd be hitting those things every single weekend because it's definitely the best way to pick up bits and pieces I've kind of mentioned it a few times funny enough in the comments maybe we should start some sort of campaign to get garage sales going here in Ireland it's just never been a thing I'm sure there's some stupid reason now the feckin' laws over here that like you have to have insurance if someone steps foot in your property to make a sale or something like that I don't feckin' know but Jeff if anyone has any ideas on how to start a garage sale revolution in Ireland give me a shout I will get behind that campaign all day long so yeah with all that considered I don't really know what I can do too different I have toyed with the idea of kind of going with a clean slate and starting like a game challenge sort of thing kind of like Retro Rick did back in the day where we take 10, 20 quid and try and build a collection from scratch from that but I don't know how feasible that is to do in this country as you see games are few and far between let alone ones that we can pick up that actually have a decent profit but now that we're kind of selling online as well we're not really relying on trade credit from CX as much it does open up a little bit for us to do something a little bit different so I don't know I'm going to have a think about it over the next few weeks anyway if you have any ideas on the direction you'd like to see the game hunting going in the channel please feel free to leave comments down below I love seeing people's suggestions someone might throw something out there that I haven't even thought of before that could really really work for the channel but as it with the way I work game hunting is either on a midweek day off or we might get lucky and get an hour or two in the morning before work or the odd time we might get an hour in the afternoon after an early shift or something like that but whatever I do it kind of has to be flexible around that it has to be something that I'm going to enjoy doing as well I mean I love days like this where we just go out swinging around the charity shops having a little chat in the car picking up bits and pieces as we go along and sometimes when you have those goals in mind it can get really frustrating when you're kind of going out week after week and you're not seeing anything but yeah persistence is the key we stuck with it for the Twilight Princess challenge and we got there in the end but yeah persistence paid off there we managed to grab a copy of it in CEX using nothing but trade credit based on games that we picked up in charity shops over four or five episodes so yeah like I said if you have any ideas on what you'd like to see us do drop a comment down below if you'd like to see me do one of those 20 euro game challenges and think you'd stick with it for 10 12 episodes where we barely scrape together a 50 euro collection go for it drop a comment down below i don't mind doing it but as long as people realize it's probably going to take more than a few episodes to really get that moving and yeah outside of that i don't know maybe we can continue with our little cex challenge where we keep finding stuff in charity shops use that trade credit to buy things that we have on our cex wish list and get a few more nice bits for the collection that way like i said all suggestions welcome throw them in the comments down below so yeah wait and see what the future of the channel holds but we're almost at these two now so head into these two see if we pick any games up and if not as i said we'll jump into cex in the pavilions and source there in the way and see if we can find a few games that we just grab for the crack for the collection <laughs> the shop's still here still four quid to get the odd bit here. Alright, last hope. Any games today? Probably a few. I think we have that already. Five at the back. 
put the five year old because we'll look this one up. We'll have a quick route to make sure we didn't miss any mixed in between. Look at this. Talk about snatching it at the death there lads, did you see that crash game on the 360? I knew the second I seen it, it's one of the higher games on the 360. Probably gone down a little bit, at one stage it was selling for 50, but it's still selling for 38 in CX and we got it there for 3 quid, so absolutely class pickup. Did overpay for the Sega Superstar Tennis, I think I paid 5 quid for it, probably only sells about 3, but it is brand new sealed. And I did mention I want to pick a few games up for myself today, so why not get it in the charity shop rather than CEX. But we're still going to stop by there, grab a couple of bits in there if we can, and go back to the game room and have a look at the other few games that we picked up in that stop there, and round up everything that's come in over the last few weeks. Just have a need for speeds we left in the charity shop earlier. And it was definitely the right choice. Anything on the PS2. Kingdom Hearts is one of the names to pick up as well. But so we have this gaming market as well next weekend, so probably shouldn't be blowing our wad in here. Maybe we just have a look and see if we can find one or two cheap, cheap games. Pick them up for the crack and then we can go through the wish list. Oh, this is one that was actually on the list. Do we have it yet? Twelve quid two. I'll have to look that one up. Actually, my that sells for forty-eight in here. I think Airline said it sells for thirty-two, but that's the trades in for. So oh, I don't know, maybe we'll sell that switch game we got Airline. If we can get forty quid for it, that's a nice little profit. Probably pay for everything that we've just picked up there too. So we'll have to have a think about that one. Is there anything retro for us? It's a premium GameCube. Oh. It is on the list, not quite clean enough for us. I do have a complete, but I want like a loose copy that I can display on its own and I actually pop it on play, so. Mm. Alright, I'll put the camera down, get stuck in, pick out a few bits and we'll have a look at what we ended up grabbing when we get back to the game room. Alright, so the last footage ended, I think I might have said we're heading back to the game room and we're leaving for that one. We're going to do two more bonus stops. I have this gammy copy of Boylike Princess with me. Don't think we're going to get full closure in this episode, but we're going to bring it up to the local CEX, get our voucher back, and it's shown in stock in a few more stores now. So we're going to try our hand one more time at a bit of CEX roulette and see if we can get a decent copy of Boylike Princess to close out that mini series. But there are two charity shops on the way down there. It'd be rude not to drop into them. We're outside the first one now. Let's go in and hopefully we can get a few more little bonus games to end the video with. All right, here we go. Last day, they said they hadn't had any games in a while and the old windows are looking a little bit bare. There's an 85 euro box of Lego for anyone interested. But yeah, let's hop in and see if there's a few games floating around the shelf. Yeah. For you, we're going to the back. 
So just grabbed one game in there that he wants to be in there on the PS2. Don't have it, it was one euro and it's in nice condition. I hate finding one single game in charity shops though. It makes you wonder if you missed out on a pile of stuff before that. But you look, grab that Mario toy as well for euro because we're obsessed and we can't leave them behind. But we'll jump into the one in Kulak now and then head to the CEX and offload this Gammy Twilight Princess and see if we can get a decent copy for the collection. Shafeka, come on, we'll jump into two Gammy ones while we're out in the boom. Look, I know I'm obsessed, all right. I'm going into Jack and Jill. I can't just do the rounds and not go in in case this is the one day they actually have games. Look, we've only been in here a week ago. I'm not going to take you in with me if there's no games in there. So don't worry. It's just me stopping off to, you know, fuel my obsession or whatever like that. But hopefully I do end up bringing it in because it means we found games. But if not, I'll see it in the next one because we didn't find games, which is more than likely what's going to happen. But you never know. So let's go in. Five minutes later. Okay, look, I know, there was nothing in Jack and Jill, but I always say you never know when it's going to be the right place and the right time where you might just pop in there as they're putting out the pile of games that were dropped in, but not today. I did very quickly scan over the Lego. I'm not sure if I showed it the last day. There was definitely a lot more bags of it in there. They do decent sized bags of Lego for tenner each. I know a few people like picking up Lego that there's decent money in it, but fair warning if you do go in there to pick up those bags of Lego, they have little bags of the minifigures on the counter. They've got like two or three of them for a tenner. I don't know which ones are worth money or not. Probably would be worth a stop if you know your Lego minifigures because some of them might be worth a few quid and could be worth picking up but there's definitely going to be no minifigures in the big bags of lego if they already picked them out and put them in small bags if you know what i mean so just a heads up on that anyway right i know i've said it but three times now vincent's then cex then home oh, i might have to look these up to see if there's any money there but i'm over funko pops of a load of my home i still can't shift Up. Nothing more heartbreaking than seeing one of your local charity shops starting to put games behind the glass case with individual prices on them. So the days of finding a few bargains there are probably gone, but look, fair place them. At least they're not pricing them completely sky high. There was a Mario Galaxy 2 there, I think it was 15, sells about 25 or 30 in CEX. A Mario Party 8 that sells for maybe 25, 30, something like that in CEX was there for 12.50. But no idea what the discs are like. I'm not going to go through the hassle of looking behind glass cases to see if the discs are in there. So yeah, look, if you're looking for a few decent Wii titles, they have them in there at a good price. So definitely stop by there and grab them before you go to like a CEX or something like that and give the money to the charity shop. But you know us, we're scabby around here. We don't mind buying the odd game at a decent price but we do try and kind of find a few bits cheap enough to build up some trade credit and get our games that way so nothing for us today but we're going to go down to cx now as i said drop in this twilight princess just get our voucher refund and then buy it online again and chance around one more time and try and grab another copy of it so we're all done in cx as usual the staff in my local cx Northside were absolutely class in and out in no time no issue voucher refunded straight away couldn't offer enough advice about the best way to go about sort of reordering it and making sure we get an original copy. Offered all sorts of different solutions, so fair play to them in there. But we got our voucher back, we've reordered it again. It was shown in stock in two shops. It was shown that it was in stock in Waterford, which wouldn't have been as horrific as a drive. Well, probably would have been as bad as a drive as going to Galway or whatever in the last one. They also had it in stock in Tallis, so it's a Friday, so there's no way I'm crossing the M50 on the Friday, even though it's only about what, half 11 or so in the day. There's still probably plenty of time to get over and back from there. So yeah, we just went ahead and ordered it online. We're going to do one more CEX roulette so keep an eye out for that in the next episode to see if we finally get that game over the line so yeah let's get back to the game room have a look at everything that we picked up in this one and we have a few little nice bits and pieces that have come in the meantime too to show off as well so definitely stick to the end for that one. but yeah let's head on home and we'll see us back in the game room so we'll back up in the game room and guess what arrived earlier than expected we've got another package from cex obviously i've ripped the top here just to kind of have it ready to go but we're going to do a little dip in here having a look it's a blue case which means they haven't sent us the wii version by mistake it looks decent is it it is a completely original cover this time so so far so good 202 we've got the game for the right console and we've got the right cover for it let's open her up it actually comes with the wii u paperwork which the other one didn't that's actually a good sign because this is really nice probably a good sign that it came from someone who kind of maybe played the game once and put it away i know a lot of my older gamecube games that i have that are in immaculate condition i'll sit on the shelf like this with all the manuals and stuff sitting really nicely in there and let's have one little look at the disc oh the disc is absolutely perfect couple of little tiny smudges here and there just from being touched but nothing else so yeah absolutely class they got a bang on this time but this is a really really nice copy of twilight princess hd mission 100 complete and we can go ahead and add this one into the zelda shrine actually just need to that's better 
So now that that chapter is closed, let's have a look at everything that we picked up in this one. Anyway, we won't keep it too long with the pickups. I've kind of shown off most of what we picked up, and I know the last few videos have been fairly long, so we'll spare you using this one. But yeah, just going back to the first one that we grabbed was this Pokemon Super Extra Deluxe Essential Handbook. It says it sells for like 11 quid in the UK, 15 US, so it's probably like a 9.99 book brand new, so probably not one that we're going to flip for too much, but for 150, I think it was worth a grab. Like I said, we'll do a little bit of research and get ourselves up to speed in our Pokemon, and worst case scenario, we'll get this on the shelf behind us and find a nice little spot for it there. And then we grab this Mario Kart 8. You'll have to let me know whether you would have picked this up or not. It was 25 quid, which is fairly paying over the odds in a charity shop, but you can't really go too wrong with Switch games. It's got the original cover. It's got the cart there. We popped it in. It plays perfectly fine. Like I said, whether to keep it or not, I don't know. I obviously have a massive collection of physical games and I don't have the biggest Switch collection. But I think while the value is still so high in this, maybe we will try and maybe get 40 quid for it and take 15 out of it. I mean, certainly if we were doing, obviously we'll talk maybe in the next video about what we're going to do going forward. But if we were doing some sort of game challenge and we had 25 quid in the bank and we managed to get 40 for this, that would be a great way of adding some funds into that little challenge. So I don't know, maybe we'll do a quick flip on it. Still undecided, you'll have to let me know what you would have done with that one. And just get two little gammy end of the road pickups that we got we grabbed a copy of who wants to be a millionaire on the playstation 2 i mentioned at the time it was a euro it was complete it was in really nice condition so when we see games for that price that were in nice condition that we don't have we just grab them to pop them into the collection now, the question is whether i actually have it or not because you know me i tend to just pick stuff up without even checking or realizing that's half the fun of it is getting back and seeing i oh, no, we don't actually have it so we'll pop that one in and it's another one that is actually compatible with the buzzers as well so i was saying for ages that I'm trying to get a little subset of all the buzz games, but I still don't have the actual buzzers. Definitely nothing that's going to be on the list to look out for at the gaming market. I think by the time this video comes out, the gaming market will be well and truly finished, but probably a week from this video, you'll be seeing, I was going to say the video from the gaming market, or hopefully I might get two out of it. Now I have, okay, full confession, obviously I'm living in the matrix here. I'm recording this when I've already been to the gaming market. Possibly we'll get two videos out of it, but the second day, for the first half of the second day, I made an absolute balls of my audio for change. You know me, I always do something stupid. Had the receiver on the camera, had it on here, and I never actually plugged it in, so I'm not sure how salvageable half that footage is going to be. So we'll either get two videos out, or if we just get one, then you know we kind of just did the best with all the footage that we have to get one really good video out. But yeah, buzzers, something that will be on the list for that video, so you'll have to tune in to see if we finally get a hold of them or not. And then also in that stop speaking, just picking up things for the sake of it, this little Mario Kart toy. It was on your Euro, you know yourself, when we see these, we pick them up, we put them in the shrine, it's overflowing with shit at this stage it's just it's an addiction it's just going to keep going down the same road get some help and then the stop in swords i think it was the last stop on the first step we went out i hadn't actually even seen these games in the bottom thought it was just going to be a few dredges on the shelves because that's what's been there for the last few weeks and then right down the bottom left hand corner there was a nice little pile of games good bit of stuff in there a lot of it was priced between three and five euro a good bit of it on the five euro mark and funny enough the ones that were five euro weren't really worth anything none of them were really in nice enough condition to pick up for that price to add into the collection we would have got them for half the price in cx so we just left them behind for someone else but did come away with these five games obviously we'll keep the main one until the end but i've recently picked up this smackdown versus raw 2008 this is actually a good trader one that will be overlooked in the charity shops you'll normally see it for a euro or two in this case it was three but we're still going to bring it up to cx and i think we're going to get like eight nine quid trade credit for it so we spent 17 on this pile we're probably going to keep the other four so maybe if we flip the mario kart between that and this that's everything paid for for this whole episode and there's a really nice game at the bottom of this still to come to so that's what we love to do on this channel we like to pick up games we like to flip the ones that we already have to make up the cost for the rest of them so that we can add them to collection for free so this was a classic example of doing that in this one so yeah nice to get back to our roots and find a few games in this one that's going to cover the cost of everything else that we picked up and then just a few randoms picked up a copy of fracture and i still have to go through the collection and kind of i have my glasses off because obviously the glare with the light is fairly real and having a little squinty look i don't think that we have a copy of this yet and this is brand new sealed so for three euro you can probably pick it up for euro or two on cex but just nice to have a brand new sealed one not that it makes a difference because we want to play it we'll probably whip it open anyway because it's not exactly super valuable in that condition but i don't know something about this is saying that i don't know if i've played it or not is this on the playstation 3 actually something's telling me there's these like weapons where you can raise and lower the ground and we got them mixed up with something else people are probably laughing at me at this stage but let us see yeah, it is actually on the PS3, so I'm pretty sure I've actually played it. So classic example of me picking up games on different consoles because I don't think I have them, but I actually have a different version of them. Like I've been saying for ages, there's a Purge episode coming soon. We're going to go through this whole collection and take out any multiples that we have and try and get a few quid back for them to put back into the collection. Yeah, anyway, three quid, sealed Xbox 360 game. Don't think we can go too wrong at that price. Then speaking of sealed Xbox 360 games that we paid too much for, I grabbed a copy of this Sega Superstars Tennis. Again, I really don't think i have this one i'll have to have a look i know this is one that's on the switch which i don't seem to have there 
Something's telling me I picked this up somewhere along the line, I don't know, but again, it's brand new sealed, five quid was probably paying over the odds, even in sealed condition. But yeah, we were picking up a few games in that stop. We're gonna get some of the money back for the SmackDown game that I was just talking about, so I don't know. Just don't really see the sealed games in the charity shops too often. Five was definitely paying over the odds, but in the grand scheme of how much this whole little pile was worth today, it was worth grabbing, sure, why not? And one more that we grabbed just to have a shot of was this Star Trek Legacy. I am a bit of a Star Trek fan. A lot of the games I haven't really played. I think I played the one on the PlayStation 3. Never played it through, but played a decent chunk of it and actually enjoyed it. It was pretty good. I don't know if this is like um, a sort of strategy type thing or not. I don't know. I know a lot of the Star Trek games have a fairly bad rap, but I don't know. You'll have to let me know if this is one of the better ones. But three euro, nice condition, really nice disc, perfect manual in there, fully complete. So we just grabbed it. But yeah, then the banger of the whole video. Certainly not worth as much as the Mario Kart, but in terms of return for what we paid of it, this was a class pickup. Grabbed this copy of Crash of the Titans. Now I mentioned in that shop that they had games for three and five euro, and this is one of the lower priced ones. So it just goes to show you, even when you think a charity shop is overpriced in items, a lot of the time they're just kind of block price and stuff where they're like, let's throw three quid and all these, five quid and all these, and there's still bargains to be had if that's all you're saying. So always have a good route through, scan your games. I knew when I seen this one that this was a valuable game. Not as valuable as it used to be. I think it's selling for like 35 or 38 euro now so i'm assuming that we probably get 22 23 quid in trade credit for it we don't have it so we're going to keep it and it was actually complete as well was this crash of the titans now not long ago someone picked this up in the discord and i remember we had a little conversation about it at the time i think it was like in terms of certainly not like a special edition in terms of like just a, a regular old single disc bog version standard of a game this was pretty much like the second most valuable xbox 360 game at the time it was going for about 50 quid so has dropped a little bit but still a really valuable game and a really cool one to see out in the wild for three euros nice to know that the charity shops aren't dead yet and we can still find really good bargains out there so yeah outside of that not a lot to report i did go into that cex later on i'd mentioned that I might pick a game or two up but kind of common sense prevailed the gaming market was due either that weekend or the weekend after so we were trying to keep as much money as possible and nothing really jumped out in there that we really wanted so we decided to keep the funds so yeah just two more bits to show in this one this was something that I actually picked up on one of the Facebook groups a good mate of mine Thomas was selling this it was like 15 quid for a little bundle deal I love stuff like this it was basically a PlayStation 1 and 2 demo disc bundle so this is the OG demo 1 and then this is the PS1 one I'm not sure what this one came with, did it come with, I don't know, did it come with the slim version of the console or something like that? Maybe it's just something with the artwork that's saying that to me. I'm not sure where this one came from. You'll have to fill me in down below if you know, but there's like six of the games that are on there. Actually, there's five new demos. One of them must be a little video or something like that, but I've been mentioning for ages, these would be a really cool thing just to randomly pop into the PlayStation one day and just have a little shot of all the little demos. See, nothing too crazy on this one here. Certainly not a disc that I remember having back in the day, but this one is a proper throwback. This old skill demo one, this was definitely like, I don't know if this came out with the console. It must have because it has like 1997 on the back of this. So this is like 27 years old, which is absolutely crazy. But yeah, it's got like a few kind of videos, technical stuff on Energy Voice. It's about eight or nine playable demos on there. Yeah, stuff like Abe's Odyssey, Formula 197 at the time that came out that was like cutting head sort of stuff rapid racer I remember karushi overboard so definitely one that we'd have to throw into the ps1 one day for a proper little throwback but yeah just love seeing stuff like this and popping it up on the shelf with all the other demo discs that we have from back in the day and now we did not buy a dvd copy of twilight new moon this is just the way the rest of the demo disc came shipped but in here we've got episode 10 of playstation ireland regular viewers will know in a few episodes ago we picked up some really really nice original playstation ireland magazines i have a couple of odds and ends of demo discs actually funny enough i think it was thomas that sent me was it like a competition win or something like that not that long ago where we got the boxed ps1 and there was a few demo discs in that as well so between that one and this one i must actually go through and marry them up to the magazines and see which ones we have because that could be a really nice little sub collection to kind of have going on the side to see if we can match all our magazines and our demo discs up and then going forward we can obviously search out more magazines and keep the little hunt going to try and match them all up but that was 10 in there and then just here we've got 14 i think our magazines only went up to about 12 i'll have to have a look these are all in really nice condition as well for old demo discs these are really class but yeah 14 we've got 6 8 11 and 9 so we'll have to get ourselves a few little jewel case just so we can pair these up but that's going to be like half of our magazines matched up with original demo discs now so i can't imagine it's very easy to find a collection of playstation or the magazines that come complete still with the discs obviously there's probably something out there that has them all bleeding sealed or something like that i don't know but yeah if we can complete our little 1 to 12 set or whatever it is it'll give us something to build on going forward maybe something to look at at conventions and gaming markets and stuff like that we might be able to pick up more of those magazines and discs and see how far we can take that collection see if we can get it anywhere close to a full set and then last but not least 
released my mate Shane. We've seen him on the channel before. I'll give a link to his Instagram here. It's It's Real Retro, class Instagram page, well worth looking at. Some really, really nice throwbacks, some really quality reels and pictures in there, and a page you really must be following if you're into everything sort of 80s, 90s toys, video games, proper retro nostalgia, definitely check it out. But yeah, he was having a little bit of a clear out, put a little box together and sent it my way. So I always appreciate when people have stuff sitting around the house that they've no longer got to use for it and they send it in. Love opening up mystery boxes like this and just seeing all of what's in there. Gave me a couple of PC games that were there basically just to buffer in the box. Yeah, Crisis and Resident Evil 4. They're actually two games I thought I had in the PC. I must have a look and see if I've got a few of them sitting around in the drawer or else maybe I sent them to him and he just somehow sent them back to me and they found their way back to the collection. I don't know, but not really one for collecting PC games. If you collect PC games and you want them, give us a comment down below. We'll send them out to you. Not something they're going to be getting into collect. But yeah, some really, really class stuff in there. We've got four original PS1 games and we've even got a Game Boy game. Now, he did say this WrestleMania 2000 that the battery might be dead in it. So I thought that would be something really cool. Maybe we can do a little project where we can open it up. I believe it's one of those things that looks a little bit more difficult than it is, is opening up a Game Boy cart and soldering a new battery. And like opening them up, obviously, is no bother. We have like a... Uh, no, a Troy Wing screwdriver, whatever you call it. But yeah, a good friend of mine, Ryan's Repairs. He has actually a YouTube channel that I don't think I've ever shouted out. He's on Instagram, Facebook, he's everywhere else, but he's been putting some really cool YouTube videos up. Again, I'll put a link here and I'll put links in the description below. If you're into videos of people where they kind of do close-ups, where they take electronics apart, put them back together, it's a channel you must be following and another really, really good Irish content creator that you should be supporting. So we'll put the links down below for that. But I think he had, yeah, I think we had a chat on one of his Facebook posts and he mentioned he might do a few videos just showing things like, you know, opening up cards, replacing Game Boy batteries, just as an introduction to kind of basic soldering and stuff like that. So I'll be keeping an eye out for those videos. If he does post them, I'll definitely share them here. But yeah, I'm sure you can find videos on how to do this there. But yeah, I'm sure you can find videos out and about on how to do this. But maybe if we kind of pick up a few tips from Ryan on how to do it, we might do our own quick little video out there just to show people that it is possible if you have the right equipment. And I might give people the confidence out there to do their own little Game Boy batteries and stuff like that. So again, we're always looking for different ideas for the odd little different videos to throw in here and there. So that might be something cool to do together. But yeah, four PlayStation 1 games. I think most of them are complete. At least this Time Crisis has got the manual, but no disc. I think I actually have one up here that's got the original case and the disc, but no manual, so that's class. We'll complete that, and maybe we can jimmy another copy together for someone else some other time. But three games here that I don't think I have. I actually, you know what? I do have the original Grand Theft Auto as well. So this is GTA Platinum. We'll have to have a look and see what sort of condition my disc and cover is in. Maybe this could be an upgrade for us and we can do a little giveaway with this, I don't know. I mentioned later on that there is going to be a Game Hunting 60 coming up, which is going to be maybe, maybe like a little reset for the Game Hunting. And when that episode comes around, we'll have probably done, like I mentioned, a game in market, maybe two game in market videos. And there'll be a few giveaways coming up in back. We've got some stuff here that I think people really like. And someone is very kindly sending something very nice to give away as well. So keep an eye out over the next few episodes. You might get a copy of this. You might get something else really nice as well. So definitely worth sticking around to have a look out for those. And then the last two games, nothing absolutely crazy. The last one actually I'm going to pop in definitely for the crack but this is Lilo and Stitch Trouble in Paradise definitely one that we don't have and this is also fully complete so one that we'll put up there on the PS1 shelf because PS1 games are not something that we come by very easily the odd time we see them in the charity shop but not too often and then this is complete I just I don't want to go dropping boxes all over the place so I just took it off but yeah Inspector Gadget Gadget's a crazy maze Never played it before, never seen it. Probably one of these that has very little to do with Inspector Gadget. Just the artwork makes it look cooler than it is. But yeah, one that we're going to put into the collection. You'll have to tell me if you've played any of these games, if there's any hidden gems or anything like that. Now. But thanks again to Shane. It's Real Retro on Instagram again. I'll link down below in the description. Make sure and go and check them out. And cheers for sending those my way, mate. Really, really appreciate that. And you know we love opening the mystery box around here on this channel. So yeah, that's it for this one. Nothing else to report here. Next time you see me, I'll be at the Irish Game and Market. And then, like I said, we'll have episode 60 coming to the game hunting. And then I don't know what we're going to do after that. We'll figure it out in the meantime. But just want to say thanks a million, as always, for sticking with the videos. Sticking to the end. Like and subscribe and commenting. All the support means the absolute world to me. Thanks so much. And we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.